From a very young age, love was omnipresent in my life. From my grandparents to my siblings and parents, affection was never in short supply. I quickly realized how lucky I was to be able to grow up in such a tender environment. As much as this setting built my standards for my future relationship, it also left me wondering. Being a child who was overflown by curiosity and love for science, the sometimes nagging questions I had from my parents weren't always answered by factual evidence. I would listen to my mom as she spoke passionately about her marriage, the relationship she had built with my dad, and this concept I had yet to discover, love. As I have always been told to seize all opportunities like a predator would its prey, I was quick and ambitious to research about the science of love. Well, dear viewers, all research starts with a question. This brings me to ask and try to answer the following. Love, science or fiction? And so, the journey began. Before starting my research, I decided to create a plan to be able to come to a conclusion about the nature of love. In order to answer my question, it was clear to me that I had to explore the sources, the effects, and the duration of love. By simply typing the keywords love and science on Google, I found hundreds and hundreds of sources. But one name kept showing up amongst the plethora of studies, Dr. Robert J. Sternberg, a well-known American psychologist. Known for the triangular theory of love, I can say with ease that Dr. Sternberg revolutionized the world of effective science. If you're as curious as I am, you're probably wondering what this theory is about. Well, according to the hypothesis, three elements can be used to describe love. The three elements, passion, intimacy, and decision slash commitment as a whole can be described as a triangle. Dr. Helen Fisher, a biological anthropologist who's become an expert on love throughout her years of research, warns that love can begin with any of these stages and it differs from person to person. Let's talk about these elements one by one. Passion, the word that many would use to describe love. Whether we have personally experienced it or felt it whilst watching Hollywood love stories, most of us have already felt passion towards something in life. In love, this can also be called lust. It is during this phase that we feel physical and sexual arousal towards other human beings. As much as we don't fully understand the functionality of our cerebrum, one thing is for sure. It plays the leading role in love by secreting something the scientists refer to as love hormones. As a matter of fact, they not only stimulate the sexual aspect of love, but they are at the core of the mysterious concept itself. These substances are produced by distinct glands in the body with the role of engaging crucial procedures in the body, in this case, love. Studies show that it is at this point where there is the major involvement of sex hormones, estrogen and testosterone. Once these hormones infiltrate the bloodstream and cohere with receptors of a particular cell, they engage into metabolic and physiological procedures. Both male and female organisms produce sex hormones that manifest themselves during puberty. Love isn't all about sex, or else it would only be infatuation. This brings me on to the next aspect, intimacy. This is when couples are head over heels for one another. Well, dear viewers, that can be explained thanks to three crucial hormones. Adrenaline, dopamine, and serotonin. As absurd as it might seem, adrenaline has the role of bringing stress upon the individual. But stress isn't always negative. As a matter of fact, it creates feelings of being able to achieve anything in couples. This is where things get very interesting. Adrenaline has effects on the circulation of the blood, the lover's muscular structure, as well as their metabolic system. The hormone in question has consequences on the contraction of the heart, thus making it beat quicker. The aftermath? Believe it or not, the individual's overall performance improves. Amongst other things, this substance improves attention and short-term memory. What about dopamine and serotonin? The role of the former is to make the individual happier and it is produced in the cerebral cortex. Want to be, excuse the wordplay, mind blown? The reason why one has such a hard time letting go of a person for whom they have romantic feelings is dopamine. When one is per se in love and they do not act on those feelings, the brain has a tendency of engaging into the secretion of dopamine, thus intensifying the feelings of love.
When we look at the effects of serotonin, we quickly realize why it is often referred to as the feel-good hormone. In point of fact, it is thanks to serotonin that the most passionate embraces and the most energetic sex do not seem to be painful, even if they lead into the slight damage of the skin and mucous membrane. When we look at the object of tender feelings, the synthesis of serotonin begins to increase. According to research done with MRI machines, the three hormones linked to the passion stage were present in high concentration during sexual activity. They, in fact, stimulate the feeling of new love. A relationship wouldn't be the same without long-term plans, such as having kids and settling down. This is where the decision slash commitment phase comes into play. Commonly referred to as the attachment phase, it is during this phase where we discern the involvement of oxytocin and vasopressin. The former is formed in the anterior nucleus of the hypothalamus, right here. Neurons sensitive to oxytocin are found in many brain structures. When the activity of these neurons were broken, women lost interest in men. It has also been found that the hormone in question helps men identify a competitive relationship. Moreover, in a randomized placebo-controlled trial, studies showed that the oxytocin plays a role in the fidelity that the humans keep within a relationship. In point of fact, the intranasal administration of the hormone in question kept men that were already in a relationship from approaching other attractive women. As for women, it has an impact on their mammary glands and uterus, helping it stretch during pregnancy. Remember when I said sex wasn't the most important factor in a relationship? Well, it turns out, it's a deciding factor in love, as a study shows that the more often a couple has sex, the deeper and the stronger their love gets. It makes perfect sense, as the hormones mentioned are produced in high concentration during sexual activity. So many answers, yet I still had a few questions. I was lucky enough to get answers from none other than Dr. Robert J. Sternberg himself. My first question being if the elements could be acquired as time passed. His answer was very reassuring. He replied, and I cite, They can be acquired. People often start only with one comment. They might first be friends. They start with intimacy. They may fall madly in love at first sight. They have just passion. They may be mixed up by a matchmaker. They only have commitment. The question is, where do they go from there? I also wondered what the most important phase was. According to the emails we sent each other back and forth, intimacy was the most crucial element. He said that without the latter, the chances are the relationship will eventually fail. Whilst researching love, I was also intrigued about brain systems, or profiles as some might call it. This is when I turned to the studies done by Dr. Helen Fisher. According to her, we each belong to a brain system according to the most present hormone in our brains. We can either be part of the dopamine, serotonin, testosterone, or estrogen slash oxytocin brain system. Let's find out our brain system together. If you are someone that's impulsive, you most probably have a dopamine brain profile. If on the contrary you are someone that's calm and who likes the known, your brain probably has a high concentration of serotonin. If you are daring and strong-minded, you are part of the testosterone brain system. And finally, if you are a visionary and like to make links in your brain, you're part of the estrogen slash oxytocin brain system. There are more women in this category than men. Don't forget, these brain systems can be combined. They aren't black or white. You're probably wondering what this has to do with love. Well, Dr. Helen Fisher has done multiple brain scans to figure out the link between hormones and love, and this is what she found out. These types go for each other. Traditional wants traditional, and creative curious spontaneous wants creative curious spontaneous. In this case, similarity attracts. On the other side, high testosterone and high estrogen differences attract. At this point in my research, one thing was very intriguing to me. Many of the studies that I had consulted said the same thing. Love inevitably declines over time. Even Dr. Fisher said it. Love usually lasts between 17 months and 3 years, after which the levels of hormones decrease, thus not having the same ramifications on a person. But these hormones can be maintained by the couple if they put in the effort. I wanted to get Dr. Sternberg's opinion of the matter, so I took advantage of the interview to ask him if he agreed with Dr. Helen Fisher. His answer made me realize that so much is unknown in science, especially in the domain of affective science. I would not really agree with her. She knows hormones better than I, but there is more to passion than love hormones. You can continue to be excited about a person much longer if you keep having new experiences together and discover new aspects of each other. All my life, love has been something positive. Unfortunately, the older I got, the more I saw heartbroken people around me. 
but thanks to my research, my hopes for love have skyrocketed. The very emotion can have so many positive outcomes, like the ones mentioned earlier, but studies also show that it decreases the cases of binge drinking and substance abuse in young couples. I was still wondering why people seem to be addicted to the emotion. Once I found out that the ventral tegmental area of the brain is highly stimulated when one is with the person they love, I understood. This is the region that is associated with reward, and it is this region that activates when one eats, makes money, consumes drugs, and alcohol. Dear viewers, I wasn't going to give you all this information without giving you the action plan. Again, thanks to discussions with Dr. Sternberg, I can present to you a science-based checklist for love. First, do you have compatible levels of intimacy, passion, and commitment? Make sure to think about the relationship you have or want to have. Make sure you aren't being taken advantage of and that you both have the same end goal. Do you have compatible profiles or stories? Make sure your personalities match up and that your brain systems are compatible. And finally, do you have a willingness to tolerate each other's flaws and to celebrate each other's successes? Everyone has flaws. It is something that is inevitable. It is how you choose to work on those flaws and grow together that matters. Successes are just as important. With my research coming to an end, I realized that there are so many things that we don't know in the domain of effective science. But from what we do know, I can say that love is such a complex mechanism. It is even sometimes just a question of love. You are now equipped with everything you need to know to make your relationship stronger or to build long-lasting ones. Thank you so much for coming on this journey with me and remember to always stay curious and explore the unknown. Thank you.